Battle Beyond the Stars was on TV all the time when I was a kid, and then suddenly never again. At least, never where I was, and not while I was paying any attention. So, I relished the chance to revisit it via Shout Factory's recent Blu-ray. The peaceful planet Akir is friendly to all newcomers. We got visitors. Hello there. Welcome to the outer atmosphere of the planet Akir. Unfortunately, John Saxon's evil empire arrives to take advantage of this. In hopes of saving their planet, Shad, played by Walton star Richard Thomas, boards his very 70s, very sassy, and surprisingly breasty spaceship to find mercenaries who will help them fight back. In his travels, he meets all sorts of colorful characters, robots, lizard men, guys in a sperm TARDIS, and a few humans as well, including the A-Team's George Papard and fuck yes, Robert Vaughn. But more on him in a moment. Also along for the fight is Sybil Danning, who just, her outfit is, I just, gosh, I mean, fuck. Later, she even gets alternate battle costuming, which again, dear God. Once assembled, the squad of mercenaries work with Shad's people, preparing them for the battle to eventually try and save their planet. Roger Corman's take on Star Wars is rather remarkable, considering how cheap most of his movies are made for. Battle Beyond the Stars reportedly cost $2 million, not a lot even by 1980 standards, but a huge sum of money for a Corman picture. Thing is though, it shows. This looks great for a Roger Corman movie. That's not to say the effects are top notch or anything, they get the job done, but they aren't without some flaws. Models appear fairly lifeless without any kind of windows or lighting to make them seem more alive. And sometimes there will be the odd effect shot where the background is vibrating or shimmering in some weird way. Again though, this costs $2 million. Three years earlier, Star Wars cost $13 million. And this movie has a lot of heart. There's creativity and imagination and inspiration all over this thing. You just know the effects team was giving it all they had. Hell, we all know this is just a painting, but look how rad this painting is. Now, lots of people were ripping off Star Wars back then, but that's all they were doing, ripping off Star Wars. Corman's plan was kinda genius. Sure, it's a Star Wars cash-in, but it's also a remake of Akira Kurosawa's The Seventh Samurai, much like how Star Wars was influenced by the same director's film The Hidden Fortress. A Space Magnificent Seven is a great idea, and including Robert Vaughn, one of the stars of that western, essentially playing the exact same character here, is really great casting. Also boosting the film's worth is James Horner's orchestral score. You can hear the genesis of his music from Star Trek II here, but that's not a negative. Normally a movie like this would get a cheap synthesizer and a drum machine for music, but having Horner's young, hungry hands on this really elevates it. His score is terrific. The script was written by John Sayles, and while it's short on in-depth character development, it moves the film along briskly without being confusing or disjointed. Corman notoriously would rip pages out of a shooting script if the film was behind schedule, but if he did that here, you can't really tell. And all along the way are fascinating locations, characters, and situations. It's all really quite amazing. Although I'll admit this bit of sexual innuendo went way over my head as a kid. Um, I think it's your torque bar. My what? Your torque bar, it slipped its groove. You're going to need a new one. Yes. Yes, I think probably you're right. A new one. Some of the extras on the Blu-ray include a 15-minute interview with star Richard Thomas, who seems to be a great sport regarding his involvement in a classic Roger Corman picture. There's also a 30-minute collection of interviews with many of the technicians who worked on the film, as they tell stories about Corman and also of James Cameron, who served as the film's art director, and I believe is responsible for putting the boobs on that spaceship. The disc also features two audio commentaries, one with Roger Corman and John Sayles, and the other with famed producer Gail Ann Hurd, who served as this film's associate production manager. I wasn't ready to sit through the film two more times in such a short time frame, but there'll be a great excuse to revisit Battle Beyond the Stars in the near future.
The cast and crew of Battle Beyond the Stars would accumulate over 10 Oscar nominations and or wins over the years, and it's sad that we just don't have this kind of system in place anymore that can crank out future filmmakers. Hell, you can see their work from this film and literally dozens of others, since footage from this has been repurposed all the time. Sure, that's mostly because Corman is cheap and he used everything he could over and over again, but also because it came from a quality piece of filmmaking. I genuinely love Battle Beyond the Stars. Not in a bad movie way, but legitimately. And I'll fight anyone who thinks otherwise. Oh, I could do wonders for that boy. I would recharge his capacitators, stimulate his solenoid, tingle, dingle, dangle, prangle his transistors. You know, sex. Jesus Christ, Sybil Danning, I love you so much. <laughs>